Good morning. It is an honor for me to be on this panel. And uh, my presentation is a little different um, than the other presenters, uh, only because I wanted to take uh, what was said here, what was written and what was posted, and pull out the emerging, the four emerging themes, and give back some directives um, that I found uh, while reading through the material. So the four key themes that I found in yesterday and reading through abstracts and summaries were, one, the limitation of science. Um, that that is really a key theme uh, amongst all of our discussions, whether it be synthetic biology, whether it be pediatric screening, whether it be DNA forensics. Two, the need to ground our discussion in history while recognizing the evolving nature of our society. Three, the need for social justice. And finally, four, the lack of viable options to address violations of social justice and human rights in the name of science. So let me go to these four points. One, science cannot cure all of our ills. I know that doesn't seem uh, very uh, new, but I think it needs to be repeated over and over again. As the other two panelists have already noted, science seems to be elite in the way that we believe that we can improve society, but it's not. So science has the potential to improve the human existence, not to replace it. Thus, the goals of science must be secondary to the objectives of society, not superior. Finally, development in science cannot be synonymous with making money or our criminal justice system. Scientific endeavors such as biobanking, originally lobbied as a means to treat disease, now are used for criminal investigation warehouses, or more importantly, just to make money. And even though this may seem as this is a change from our history, it is not. And so that's why it is important for us to ground our concerns in history. The objectives and the methods of science um, have not changed, just the technology. And for an example of this, I reach back to what has already um, been discussed a lot throughout this meeting, is the Henrietta Lacks case. I think this is a perfect example of how history has not changed, um, science has not changed, that our history is still there. For me, looking at this case, it's about a woman who went into a hospital, was receiving care, and science was a part of her experience. To me, it shouldn't have been, but it was. And that's the same thing that continues to happen when you look at pediatric screening, when you look at the Moore case where he was being treated and then his cells were taken, manipulated, and patented, right? That it's a continuation of our history. An evolving sense, because we changed perhaps the technology um, now it's about patenting the genome. Before it was just about cancer cells and manipulating them. Um, but again, the same thing continues to happen. And that same thing for me, and what I'm hearing uh, throughout the conversation, is that we've lost the focus of what science is supposed to be. Right? Science has returned to this utilitarian theory of what's in the best interest of society that we will exploit, manipulate individuals for the best interests of society. But the question uh, that was posed and uh, some of the statements that, was ma that were made throughout yesterday, are we really benefiting society? In the end, when we set up biobanks um, as a means to be able to address, prevent, or treat disease, did that really happen? And that takes me to my third point of social justice. Social justice um, has been defined in numerous ways. It has evolved. In the past, justice means fairness and protecting those who are vulnerable from exploitation. And one can argue that this definition really didn't protect people in the past. But it did a better job than the definition we have today, which is fair opportunity and inclusion. Today, justice 
is when society provides the most vulnerable with a fair opportunity to be included in research that has the potential to help a society in which the vulnerable are denied citizenship. An example is outsourcing medical research to developing countries who will not be able to afford the new drug and whose genetic information will be used to get a patent that provides money to the U.S. and other developed markets, countries who will deny the, the, these research subjects citizenship. And finally, turning to law. As a law professor, most people would expect me to say that we should turn to the law and the law is the answer. I don't feel that way. Um, as we looked at the law, as we heard discussions yesterday, the law is not effective currently in addressing these problems. Yesterday, many of the presenters discussed the fact that the protections in the US and abroad were often illusory and not binding. And I can tell you as a scholar of justice that there is only one instance of justice and binding law, and that's in the US. And when you look at medical research uh, that is supposed to ensure that people are not exploited, that they're not targeted, often that requirement is overlooked um, when you look at the research uh, proposals that are reviewed, only 10% of those proposals uh, really get into this issue of justice. When you look abroad, there is no binding law when it comes to justice and ensuring um, that justice is used in terms of medical research, let alone geno genomic research. So what should we do? Should we turn to human rights? Should we turn to bioethical principles? Should we turn to the theories of public health? Well, that leads me to my directives. First, we must harness science to improve lives, not to further our need for greatness, fulfill our intellectual curiosity, or make money. And when I say our, I don't mean the people in this room. I mean humanity. Those using science for their own gains use the language of social justice to manipulate and exploit the vulnerable. Therefore, we must be careful when using language that says we are doing what's in the best interest of the public, because that language has been taken over. Finally, we need to interrogate the current relationship between the state and population groups and work to increase the power, the voice that groups have in making laws and policies that govern science. And as Eric said, we need to change our views about what we're trying to do. That it simply can't be changing the laws about social justice. That we need to think about it in a different way, in, in a commercial way, and addressing issues about economics. And finally, we need to clearly define and discuss the privacy and property rights of the individual. Because we talked a lot about the collective. But remember that these violations, as Becky said, affect individuals. And so it's not just about groups having power, it's about individuals having the power to address uh, science and how it affects their lives. Thank you.